Hey everyone, it's Sevi. Thanks to the 3.0 special program, we've been given a better picture of the dendro reactions on the way. There are exciting possibilities over the horizon from combat to team comps, and these reactions are also going to bring into the limelight some characters who may find new utilities and potential. In particular, I want to talk about two characters who, in the past, have been met with quite underwhelming reception, but might turn out to be late bloomers after all. I also want to touch on the sub-reactions of Dendro as well as the new artifacts. This will hopefully be the first of many more videos exploring the new Dendro element. Before anything else, let's do a quick overview of the Bloom reaction and its sub-reactions. When Dendro reacts with Hydro, a Bloom reaction will occur, producing a Dendro core or seed. Hence, you will need a Hydro character. Hydro characters have already been such an integral part of the meta, particularly with Vaporize, Electro Charge, and Freeze Team. Now, they're going to be more valuable with many Dendro teams too. After a few seconds, or once the maximum number of seeds has been reached, the seed will explode to deal Dendro damage. However, before that seed explodes, you can apply one of two elements, Pyro or Electro. Applying Pyro to the seed will produce Burgeon, which will explode the seed into AoE Dendro damage. Applying Electro will produce Hyper Bloom, causing single-target Dendro damage referred to in the livestream as a sprawling shot. And we can also safely assume that the damage will scale from the elemental mastery of the pyro or electro character that triggered the reaction. While there are no official numbers out yet, these reactions look promising nonetheless for opening team options and giving old characters new potential meta options, which I'll get to soon. There are also other dendro-based reactions, but for now, these are what's relevant to the topic. The upcoming Sumeru artifacts, Deepwood Memories, and Gilded Dreams will also be relevant in building Bloom-based teams. The Deepwood Memories is essentially our token Dendro set, providing plus 15% Dendro damage on the two-piece. Its four-piece effect, however, reduces Dendro resistance by 30% via hitting an enemy with a skill or burst. As far as we know, Animo cannot swirl Dendro, so this artifact will be the replacement of Viridescent Venrar to reduce Dendro resistance. Since Bloom, Burgeon, and Hyper Bloom all end up in Dendro damage, having a teammate equipped with this set will definitely raise the DPS potential of the reactions. Take note as well that the 4-piece effect does not require a Dendro character to trigger it. They only need their skill or burst to hit. So even non-Dendro characters can equip it, which might make for some interesting comps. The other new set, Gilded Dreams, is an EM-centric set. The 2-piece effect gives 80 EM, while the 4-piece effect gives attack percent and or EM depending on your team's composition. Here's an example of how that 4-piece effect works. Say you have a Dendro Hydro Double Electro team, with one Electro unit equipped with 4-piece Gilded Dreams. Since there are two characters of elements other than Electro, the equipped character gets an additional 100 EM, and since there is one other Electro character on the team, the equipped character gets 14% attack. You can get a maximum of 3 stacks on either buff. In Dendro Reaction teams, the EM buff is really what we're after, coming at a maximum of 230 EM from the full set. Used in tandem with someone else on the Deepwood set, it opens up good synergy for these Bloom-based teams. Now we're acquainted with the relevant reactions and new sets. Burgeon and Hyper Bloom teams will need their respective Pyro and Electro units who will proc these sub-reactions. Some units may fare better than others due to how elemental application and ICD work. We know some already strong characters will unsurprisingly get even stronger thanks to the new reactions. But let's shine a spotlight on these two characters who might stand to gain a lot more than others with new meta team possibilities. First up is Toma. He's often seen as a very meh character. He works well as a shielder, but has relatively limited or niche synergy. He also isn't seen as a strong vape damage dealer because 1. His attack scaling damage is quite low, and 2. Because despite his pyro cones proccing every second, these have standard ICD, meaning it only applies pyro to an enemy every 2.5 seconds or 3 hits. But if you're not aware, he currently also has an overload slash overvape build recommendation where you stack EM and ER on him to trigger overload off field. As of 3.0 though, Toma's Burgeon era has come. With Burgeon, his pyro application standard ICD actually becomes an advantage given that your team can consistently create seeds to trigger Burgeon with. Why is that? 
Firstly, in a Burgeon team, you want to avoid triggering burning since doing so will make it difficult to trigger the bloom reaction instead. Toma's standard ICD helps you mitigate that since his pyro application is relatively slower. In the meantime, he can proc Burgeon on the bloom seeds. His ICD isn't a problem here because the seeds should each be considered separate entities and require only one instance of pyro application to be triggered. So as long as you can keep creating multiple seeds, he can trigger multiple Burgeons. Other units like Shangling, who applies pyro really fast with no ICD, could inadvertently trigger burning, which will make it hard to produce bloom seeds. So it's not going to have the same dynamic as Toma. Now, how might you build Toma for a Burgeon team? Assuming that his damage scales from his EM stat, like transformative reactions, you'll want to make a full EM build on Toma while still addressing his energy needs to ensure burst uptime. This also means you might want to level 90 him to get the maximum reaction damage as it scales on character level and EM stats. For the weapon, Favlance or Kitane Spear might be the top choices. Favlance to address the team's energy needs, or Kitane Spear to make him deal more Burgeon damage plus give himself an energy refunding mechanic. Another choice is Dragon's Bane, but this might lead to ER problems. His best artifact set for this team might now be the full Gilded Dream set. If Toma is your only pyro on the team, he can get a full 230 EM from the set bonuses alone. His ER demands are still quite high though, so you may need an ER stance, weapon, and or lots of ER substats. Toma simps, it may be your time to shine. One more character to see a lot of new potential is Kuki. It was only recently that her reception in terms of utility was quite lukewarm. However, we held out hope for her potential to be unlocked when Dendro comes, and fortunately, this is looking to be the case. Kuki, like Toma, has an existing recommended EM-focused build, particularly for Overload teams. And now, with Dendro, you can use her for a Hyper Bloom role as well. Since her skills ring continuously applies Electro in an AoE, this can function as the trigger to hit Dendro cores around you. That's convenient, because single target Electro application may have problems triggering Hyper Bloom, like Yae's skill or Fischl's Oz, as we're unsure how well their hits can also splash or catch catch these dendro cores. But at least AoE abilities, like Kuki's, can more reliably do so. And like Toma, her ICD can be an advantage as she'll have slower electro application on the enemy, letting you control your bloom reactions more. But she can trigger each dendro core as separate entities. With this, her role as a healer and damage dealer becomes more consolidated, giving her new possible meta teams to work with. Kuki's best weapons will likely be EM weapons like the Dark Iron Sword, Iron Sting, or Freedom Sworn, or a Fav Sword if you want to make her a team battery. Tenacity of the Millilith with EM main stats should still be a very good set to run her with, making her an attack buffer as well. Though, the new Gilded Dream set might be a very viable option for her too. It'll depend on whether her team will benefit more from the team-wide attack buff, or if the reaction damage makes it worth stacking EM on Kuki. If you're wary or skeptical about all these, as you should be, don't build these characters right away. Wait for official showcases and tests with Dendro as soon as it's out, and I'll be looking forward to sharing those with you. All those considered, I for one am excited to see what Toma and Kuki have to offer. And while many other characters, Electro in particular, are definitely going to have so many new possibilities, it's worth seeing if these two characters' hidden potential will finally bloom and burgeon with Sumeru's arrival. That's going to be all for this video everyone, let me know in the comments what you think of Toma's and Kuki's potential upcoming possibilities. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care!